Alright guys, time to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And while the matches in the CDL might not have been the most entertaining last night, the personalities and the players within the scene never fail to deliver. Plenty of drama and spice on the tunnel we are going to dive into today. And treat your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. I'm really upside the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, a few things from the cruising side of things. Just a few small things to dive through to be honest. First of all, this from Krim. Released the Porter Cut, he says, on Twitter just a couple of days ago now. Seeing that it apparently... Apparently, the Hook video is relatively is coming relatively soon. He's going to be speaking with legal counsel. It's going to have to go through confirmation with a load of different people. But I imagine it's been recorded. It's ready to go, hopefully, sometime next week after these matches conclude this week. We can talk about this Hook video that we've been talking about for months, it seems, at this point, when Crim6 initially announced it was going to happen. We did see this from Crim as well yesterday, kind of uh, going a bit rogue against the CDL, saying that uh, the way they structure things shouldn't be well. They should change how they structure things going forwards. Trendrex is like, look, I'm going to keep it about 50. The org cut of this 30% is straight up. BS. What they gained from you winning alone can be sold to major brands, etc, etc. Crim's like, look, I agree 100%. There was even articles made about my thoughts on the matter last year, which we were kind of talking about yesterday. But interesting that pretty much organisations, at least um, the majority of them, as Crim seems to say right here, will take a 30% cut of the prize winnings, which um, is maybe somewhat surprising because maybe you could um, make that up in salary or do something to mean that you don't have to necessarily take that prize cut. But whatever the situation might be, certainly an interesting discussion to keep your eyes on going forwards. Crim's if he'd started his own organisation, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't go down that route. He talked about it in the past. This is well that Charlie Intel came out with yesterday, the new Hardpoint sound effect. When you go into the Hardpoint now, there's like um, some sort of more, it's more exaggerated sound effect than it used to be, and Grimsick's not necessarily too happy about it. He's straight off the diving board, and uh, well, Walt said it straight into the pool. Let's talk about this then, right? So Zero obviously in a tough spot, along with a load of the challenges players, especially in the European side of things. Crazy how quickly the season has gone. Feels like yesterday I was still trying to get a visa. Excited to hopefully finish on a high, then prepare for the craziness that is Rostermania. So many players right now thinking, okay, when Rostermania comes if there is an expansion and right now there's no rumors that there is going to be expansion then um well things get absolutely insane to be honest with how some of these organizations might decide to move with rosters next season another player in a difficult spot is methods of course need a challenger team so he got dropped of his uh, challenger squads i'm pretty sure yesterday which um, puts him in a difficult spot right and i know he's frustrated last night on the flank and understandably so when a guy like a well a team like los angeles grillers a complete garbage could be a good target for a guy like methods to go to and then his team in toronto ultra just completely dominates them which um, of course he got benched off early Earlier this season, so difficult spot for him. I mean, what am I watching, man? He says in reply to pretty much the Los Angeles Grilla series yesterday, just getting completely smoked off the map, like a top two team in the game, destroying the worst team in the game. It's uh, maybe not even a surprise at this point. And as he says right here on the 12th of July, I've officially retired from drinking, announcing my return after the difficulty that was last night for him, I'm sure, individually. Now, let's talk about this because Mork said yesterday, feel so bad for all my bros in LAG. All of them are great individually, just can't put it together at the moment, and they just look completely awful. Now, BZ comes with a question mark to the replies. I think this is a pretty funny tweet, right? I guess Abizi might be saying, look, Mork, I mean, you're meant to be their teammate, right? You're on their academy squads and um, you know, just saying they look absolutely awful right now. It's kind of funny because maybe a lot of people might look at this tweet from Mork, as Method certainly did. They were looking at it a second and say, okay, Mork is just kind of frustrated that he's not getting his shot on the starting team. Now, Silly says, of course, on the starting roster for Los Angeles Grillers, even from your peers, hate to see it. So I guess he's referring to, you know, Mork as one of his peers right here, but Abizi also his peer, I suppose, in the pro scene. But uh, maybe Abizi didn't necessarily see it right That's I mean, brother come on now effectively saying look you're just I mean at the end of the day you can say what you want silly in the replies but um you still pretty much are straight up garbage at the present time there's that uh, Morks is not exactly speaking cap on this particular occasion so this other was pretty upsetting that Abizi would just come out and just straight up say this because I think you said the other day or some players said the other day Los Angeles Grillers not looking particularly spectacular I mean um I think actually yeah no it was Abizi who said when he said like Los Angeles thieves were looking pretty poor again the other day in scrims then um, like uh, I think it was Scump who asked him like which LA team do you mean and he was like, well, come on now, like, you know, uh, you know, the other one isn't doing particularly well. They got 8 bodied by their academy team we looked at a few days ago. So Silly then comes in the reply, no one is getting absolutely smoked every series solely based off skill. I wish it was simply that. So CDL Scrimtel is kind of, okay, okay, hang on a second then. What is it then, brother? Because you've got two coaches. It's not exactly lack of stuff. Like, genuinely, probably asking the question, what is the reason for you guys absolutely suck at the game? Is it, um, is it teamwork? Is it, like, individual talent? What is the problem, right? I think a lot of us could probably point in some reasonable directions there. But 
But still, he says, look, can you just stick to posting scrims, man? And when he comes back, one of the, one of the more phenomenal replies I've seen so far this season. No problem, man. Loved posting the ones you had the other day where they got absolutely 12-point clubs by their own academy squad. So I thought this was absolutely hilarious, to be honest. I mean, um, Silly just, like, I don't know. If he just replied to less tweets and Reddit threads and stuff, he would catch less strays like this. But um, I did think it was pretty funny regardless, to be honest. So, well, anyway, this continued then because we looked at the tweet that Morks just tweeted out there where he was like, okay, the team sucks. And then Methods came out and said that maybe he's lying through his teeth or whatever. And, well, Morks wasn't particularly happy about it. Not lying through my teeth, moron. Obviously, I have more insight onto the situation of the team and trying to support my good friends through a tough time. Was the moron necessary? So hurtful, says Methods, to spew some BS, yeah. You didn't think that and think, wow, maybe he was just being sarcastic, did you? So certainly a bit of spice on the timeline, no doubt about it. And then things go on to continue. This came out on the flank last night that they were talking about the Scraps G situation. So Scraps, of course, over at the Paris Legion. I've heard a fair bit of drama that went down with this team particularly recently. All the bottom four squads in the game seem to be completely chalked right now. Scraps is looking at the squad and thinking, wow, this team is absolute garbage. Like, um, can I just leave the team? Apparently he was threatened to leave, like he considered leaving the squad just, just last week or something. And so then he probably realised, hang on a second, if I leave, they probably uh, make my contract void and my paycheck is gone. So I think they were even like scrimming with theory for a series or like for a scrim set or something, tried to get someone from challenges but couldn't get anyone as Parasite like, goes on to explain. And then uh, Scraps eventually does decide to make the grand return. But so we've seen him talking a lot lately about uh, wanting to quit and going to wars and all this type of stuff. Um, seems like, uh, well, that may be very much on the horizon here. I mean, listen, a lot of these teams at the bottom, man, are just really struggling. I mean, I'm sure mentally these guys are struggling too. I mean, there was definitely some rumors over at Paris with Scraps, right? He was talking on stream a little bit. He was talking about how he's quitting. And then apparently he quit, and then the next day, Matty came back. So, you know, apparently there's some problems going over there in Paris. Um, and that's what we were talking about before the show. Um, you know, uh, I wasn't sure whether to talk about it, but he said something publicly. So um, I wasn't sure if it was true. But it was just like, you know, arguments going back and forth. I don't know what really happened, but they're back together again. They're still screaming again. But I just think mentally a lot of these oh, teams... Oh, are you talking about the uh, Scraps thing? Yeah, yeah, the Scraps thing. He talked um, about it on stream. No, he was... Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it because I know. But, like, he actually was dead serious about not playing. And Paris was looking for options. And they basically couldn't get anyone from Challengers uh -huh. because the way that this works now is with Challenger champs, right? Mm -hmm. If you were to play... if So there was a there was a loophole, right? If you were to yeah. play the Open, which is the weekend of the, la the last group stages, so next weekend there's the Open tournament. Yeah. If you're a top 24 seed in that Open tournament, you auto-qualify for Challenger champs, right? Uh -huh. So you could play Challenger champs, and then let's say they need somebody for the Major because Scraps stopped playing. Right, mm -hmm. you can go play the major with them and then lose your contract. It's so pretty remarkable that a player like Scraps and these type of guys just want to straight up quit their team. Not really the greatest look, let's be honest here. Like, obviously, it's a difficult spot, but you don't really hear about the guys on uh, Seattle or whatever just deciding to quit and uh, you know, dip out of their team entirely, do a decimate, you could argue, even though that's a completely different situation. But uh, Scraps probably realized, okay, probably I should actually come back here and collect the paycheck for the rest of the season and then decide what I want to do. But it's still not a great look, especially because a lot of discussion was going around the London Royal Ravens last season, right? The fact that, yeah, was, um, was Scraps and Waskin those guys like were they fully engaged the entire season that was a lot of the talk right of the motivation and um you know that type of stuff wasn't exactly there so maybe an indication of that coming out here on the paris legion side but well as crone says hearing that paris tried to look into getting hamza formerly glow frosty in the challenger side before scraps ended up going back cdl rosterlock was just before stage five kicked off there must be an exception if a player quits or retires theory is legion's substitute theory of course a former pro player but um you wouldn't really want to get him in for scraps to be honest probably the team would get even worse than it already does but this is the thing it's, it's situations like this why these matches with the bottom four teams in the league are just so dull because um obviously it's got to be tough for these guys when you know you're chalked for champs to actually keep up the motivation but there is still some prize money to be won right if you can make a good run at the major you can still pocket a fair bit of cash so um there's still something to be played for here and it's just frustrating to see that a lot of pro players seem to be in this situation this comes out on the flank as well last night from the los angeles griller side we heard earlier this season the reason why vivid got benched off the team supposedly was um he either benched himself or the, the team just decided, okay, he was complaining a lot about the team and he effectively said, look, this team is trash. Like, um, I'd rather just like me get benched than the rest of the squad actually, you know, at least do something with the team, right? Either get rid of half the squad and uh, keep me, and this is being vivid from Vivid's perspective, or just get rid of me and, you know, do something else. They eventually just decided to get rid of him. Obviously, not a good decision looking back on it. And um, now Haggy's talking about the fact that, yes, pretty much every single player on Los Angeles Grillers at some point or another wanted the entire other half of the team dropped. And uh, still nothing happened, right? So, 
effectively saying, look, the organization, it's not just the players that are at fault here. It's the organization and the management over there. This is making garbage decisions day in, day out. Source, right? That pretty much everyone on the team at some point uh, wanted the other half of the team dropped and nothing happened. They were forced to stick. There's no everyone is obvious to what happened at this point when it's been said so many are oblivious to this because we've been they've been saying it like this entire time. Like they've been saying this entire time that they've wanted changes like big changes, oh, no. but no one has let them do anything. And yeah, I basically heard that from Reliable Service. Uh, I, so a couple of interesting things to finish off the video. This firstly from Killer Sloss right now, Adam Killer Sloss, legend in the cold scene, the first ever world champion, or at least on the team of the first ever world championship victory on Free Queen Pact back in 2013 in Black Ops 2. I don't think I've ever tuned into the CDL stream and watched Seattle win one time in almost two years. No cap. I thought this is kind of funny, right? Because I don't know how much I keep, Killer keeps up with the, you know, the top tier, the competitive scene, to be honest, at the present time. But I'm um, still, he still like streams from time to time and all this type of stuff. But just thought it was kind of funny that um you know he tuned into the stream one time yesterday and seattle just got bodied which um is pretty much what's been having this for the last couple of years it's a tough spot right now speaking of seattle quickly this one jack pointed out on the reddit yesterday this is actually pretty incredible classic has managed to go negative for 16 straight matches i don't know what the record is for this but as you can see a 0.52 a 0.61 this is in reverse chronological so this is yesterday series the last time we went positive was on april the 3rd which is um, a pretty remarkable stuff to be honest it's i mean that this guy classic he's absolutely out of control 16 straight matches in the negative it's um it's pretty impressive stuff to be honest so fair play to the guys on seattle breaking records day in day out these are the matches for today then because yesterday wasn't pretty today i'm actually quite excited for these first up we've got dallas empire versus the florida mutineers now this might not look so good but to be honest i think this is really interesting because empire are fighting for the second seed they really want to win this series to you know solidify their spot even more so than they already have done or at least give themselves a better chance of getting the second seed for the world championship florida mutineers though on the other hand they're fighting for the sixth seed they're still within a shout of getting to the sixth seed of the world championship that's going to be massive for them so both these teams are something to fight for mutineers have been great online to be honest and dallas empire have been a team that's i think a little bit suspect online i think dallas is certainly better in a land environment i think um crim six always talks about the internet issues that he has and like the apartment being pretty bad over there or like the um the, the, well the dallas empire facility having pretty bad internet stuff like this so for a few reasons i think the series is actually really exciting and then the second series of the day is phase versus thieves and i really want to see how thieves can possibly match up here Yes, we saw a BC just a few days ago saying, yes, thieves are absolute garbage. And, or at least not absolute garbage, but like they were getting destroyed, basically. They're not looking too hot. That's uh, what a, a BC was saying at the time when they were screwing against FaZe. And then when Kenny came on um, the, the interview a few days ago that we did here on the channel, he was saying, yes, we um, we pretty much got destroyed by only two teams. And that was Optic and FaZe. They were the teams that were really um, kind of doing this in. But the other squads we, we played pretty well against. So still, not the greatest sign for thieves here. But they've had a couple of weeks now to practice even more so than we they already did at the time. And um, now they might be in a spot to actually put up a fighter. Yes, I'd still probably predict a phase 3-0, but uh, look, if Thieves can win one, maybe even two maps here, get this series the distance, it definitely raises some interesting question marks as to how good Thieves are going to be for the rest of the season. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm that you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive quality community. Thank you guys as always. Take care, and I will see you next time.